and I will briefly introduce him to you, our last speaker of today. And um, first of all, just to say that uh, Antonio Celli uh, was born uh, in Genoa. I, I will not say the year, but the day, because just maybe I can say that tomorrow is your birthday. And so, again, a lot of thanks for being here with us. At, uh, 30 years ago. <laughs> of course, at least 30 years ago. And uh, in Genoa also, uh, Professor Uccelli obtained a medical degree and uh, um, then uh, he specialized in, uh, in uh, neurology. When he, uh, afterwards, he was postdoctoral fellow in the Laboratory of Neuroimmunology of the Department of Neurology at the University of California in San Francisco with Professor Heiser. And then in 1993, uh, he had a, a position in the Department of Neurology at the University of uh, Genoa. And uh, now he is director of the neuroimmunology unit of this uh, department, and his research activity focuses in particular, of course, on multiple sclerosis, and more recently on the topic uh, of the main topic of this speech, that is adult uh, uh, stem cells. He had a lot of awards, in particular uh, in 2001, uh, the Rita Levi Montalcini Award uh, as the best Italian researcher in the field of multiple sclerosis, and. Uh, um, he joined uh, also the Center for Excellence in Biomedical Research at the University of Genoa with Professor uh, Moretta. He was also director of the Neuroimmunobiology Laboratory of the Advanced Biotechnology Center in, uh, in uh, Genoa and also director of the Center for Research and Cure of Multiple Sclerosis in the University of uh, uh, Genoa. He published very much, uh, and I'm sure that uh, most of you uh, in particular those interested in, uh, in uh, multiple sclerosis and in general in the immunobiology on the central nervous system and know many of his uh, work and so I will not take much more time and I invite Professor Uccelli to give uh, his uh, speech. So thank you very much. Thank you Marco and uh, I really appreciate this uh, kind invitation. Uh, I, I've been told that uh, it's, we can speak in English, and uh, uh, but please do not worry and, and have this uh, talk as a very informal, uh, you know, speech among friends. So you can interrupt me anytime. Uh, it's uh, it, it's very nice to be here, and uh, uh, I apologize for being late. I mean, the traffic is, uh, you know, ex a partial excuse. I, I left late. I was with patients until. Uh, late uh, uh, in the early afternoon, and I left Genoa at quarter to two. This is the main reason, but uh, uh, I, I'm glad I somehow I made it, and thank you for waiting. So, uh, as uh, uh, Marco said, I'm a neurologist that uh, in the last 10 years has started to be interested in uh, uh, stem cells, but from, uh, as you will see, from a, a rather different point of view, uh, as a uh, uh, indeed, I didn't know much about uh, stem cells before I uh, realized that uh, these, uh, I mean, adult stem cells, and particularly those I will talk about, which are mesenchymal stem cells, are uh, endowed with uh, the ability to, uh, to play with immune cells and, uh, and uh, have an impact on their uh, different functions. So let's just introduce the, the topic, saying that... Uh, at this stage, uh, uh, the, the current portfolio for the treatment of multiple sclerosis with stem cells include uh, hematopoietic stem cells, and uh, this treatment is based on the ability of uh, mobilized hematopoietic stem cells from the bone marrow, and uh, following uh, 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 you know, a, a severe chemotherapy that uh, leads to the ablation of uh, the immune system will uh, uh, then result in the infusion of these cells with the aim of uh, reconstitute a, a, a healthy immune system, at the same time eradicate autoimmunity, and possibly reset the uh, immune system toward a more tolerogenic one. Uh, other cells uh, involved in, uh, or possibly involved in the treatment of multiple sclerosis are neuroprecursor cells, and uh, many of you know the work of Gianvito Martina, Stefano Pluchina, San Raffaele Hospital, which, uh, who demonstrated that these uh, cells that can be obtained from the uh, brain or particularly the particular areas of the brain 
can be expanded in vitro and uh, injected intravenously, leading to, uh, at least in animal models, to uh, uh, tissue repair through different mechanisms, which include uh, transdifferentiation and neuroprotection, induction of local neurogenesis and immunomodulation. But what I will going to talk about are these cells, namely mesenchymal stem cells, get, that can be isolated from different tissues, mainly from the bone marrow and adipose tissues, but also from uh, almost any connective uh, uh, tissues. These cells, at least those that are uh, isolated from the uh, uh, bone marrow, uh, are uh, known to play a major role in the uh, maintenance of the hematopoietic uh, stem cell niche uh, through the interactions with the uh, hematopoietic stem cells. I invite you to, if you're interested, to read this fantastic work from Paul Frenet, who published in uh, uh, August last year uh, uh, a, a detailed analysis of the interactions between the mesenchymal and hematopoietic stem cells within the niche where, uh, as I said, the uh, larger part of the stem cells population is composed by hematopoietic stem cells, and a very limited amount of cells, less than 0.001%, are cells with the, uh, from, the from the mesodermal lineage, which are, uh, as I said, uh, named mesenchymal stem cells. What's the rationale for using these cells for the treatment of autoimmunity? There's no doubt that uh, everybody uh, working on stem cell in the stem cell field has, uh, uh, you know, moved in uh, uh, with the idea that this cell could uh, uh, provide tissue repair through uh, uh, transdifferentiation mechanisms, meaning uh, uh, regenerate the tissue through their ability to uh, generate new cells, potentially also from uh, uh, other. Uh, um, uh, embryonic lineages. But uh, as you will see, more recent data have shown that uh, these cells uh, can uh, indeed uh, play a, a, an important role uh, due to their ability to <coughs> interact with immune cells and provide uh, bystander effects which leads to the release of uh, different molecules with trophic, anti-apoptotic, antioxidant effects and potentially also with the ability of uh, mobilize and uh, 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 local precursors neural cells. Uh, oh, this is extremely bright. Nevertheless, uh, uh, this uh, uh, slide uh, shows you that uh, MSCs uh, have the ability to become neurons. This is a, a study published by Bruno Bonetti in, uh, in Verona. Uh, who nicely demonstrated, although he wasn't the first, but uh, I think was uh, uh, very, uh, a, a very nice uh, demonstration that these cells can acquire a, a, a neuronal phenotype. And uh, it was able also to show that uh, uh, MSCs, uh, uh, I mean, uh, MSCs derived uh, neural cells can also uh, uh, have a, a, an electric activity. Nevertheless, as you will see later on, uh, I have to admit that uh, the uh, experimental evidence that uh, transdifferentiation into neural cells occurs in vitro as well is uh, quite limited and very controversial, and I personally do not believe it. Uh, one of the, uh, as I said before, one of the mechanisms that could, uh, uh, you know, trigger our curiosity about the possibility of using MSCs uh, uh, for uh, 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 neurodegenerative disease uh, derives also from the well-known ability of uh, MSCs to uh, uh, promote uh, survival, survival of neural cells. In this paper uh, published by the group of Niels Scolding, uh, it was stated that, uh, uh, and this is just an example, MSCs can uh, secrete uh, uh, neurotrophic factors, in this case is BDNF, which promotes, as I said, neuronal survival. One of the most uh, intriguing uh, effect that has been, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, provided uh, in the literature by, uh, by uh, this group, which is uh, a group uh, uh, located in the United States, is Darwin Sprockup's group uh, in, uh, in Texas, was the uh, 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 demonstration that when you inject uh, MSCs, in this case, uh, 
in this cartoon, MSCs are in pink, into a mouse in which uh, 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 local neural precursors are labeled in green, and, uh, and in these mice you induce a, a, a little injury at the cortex level, what is going to happen is that you'll see migration of labeled cells that are indeed are not the pink one, therefore are not the mesenchyma one, but uh, uh, local precursors that tend to migrate toward the, uh, uh, the, the injury where are recruited and they uh, acquire a, a phenotype that uh, looks like uh, 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 neural cells. But as I said, in uh, the early 2000, I was uh, a neuroimmunologist with uh, very little uh, experience in the field of stem cells. And what struck my attention was this paper that was published in Blood from the group of uh, Carmelo Carlo Stella from Milan, showing then that uh, uh, human, I mean, human bone marrow derived stromal cells can suppress T cell proliferation. At that time, I was still playing, and I still do that, uh, with uh, uh, experimental models of autoimmunity and uh, mainly with experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis. And I had, uh, uh, I have to say, the, 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 the interesting idea that uh, cells that uh, have the potential of uh, uh, stem cells, and therefore they could theoretically repair tissues, at the same time, uh, uh, having also the potentiality of uh, uh, inhibit T cell proliferation may have been the ideal source of cells for the treatment of uh, an autoimmune disease such as EAE and possibly multiple sclerosis because indeed, it, as far as we know, in this disease, T cell activation and B cell activation and other immune cells activation leads to myelin damage, as you heard these days and uh, uh, final destruction and therefore neurodegeneration. So here is uh, a, a, a postdoc uh, recapitulation of the roadmap that uh, led uh, uh, from the very beginning to uh, uh, demonstrating that uh, MSCs can indeed modulate different aspects of the immune response, co uh, uh, allow based on this uh, evidence that, uh, demonstrating that MSCs can uh, treat experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, to then uh, further dissect the mechanism of action of these uh, effects through different aspects that I will go through in the next slide. And then, if that was the case, and luckily that was the case, to demonstrate that MSCs can be utilized in humans in a safe way, then uh, have a uh, enough uh, scientific uh, uh, you know, evidence of such results to generate a consensus about their use in humans, and uh, at the end, has uh, it happened to be the case, to design the ultimate clinical trial. So let's go through all these steps to show you that indeed MSCs can inhibit T cell proliferation. This paper from uh, uh, Federica in the lab demonstrated that uh, when you uh, challenge uh, T cell uh, trigger with uh, anti-CD3, anti-CD28, which leads to, as expected, to T cell proliferation. In the presence of MSCs, you will see a, a significant inhibition in a dose-dependent manner, which is uh, poorly responsive to IL-2 administration. And this effect is due to the fact that, uh, as demonstrated here by the intracellular uh, uh, detection of ki 67 which is a protein associated with all the uh, different cell cycles of the uh, of cell division exclude, excluded the, the uh, uh, G0 phase, it's, it, it's indeed due to uh, inhibition of cell division. So basically, the cells are not killed, as you see here, uh, showing that uh, MSCs do not induce apoptosis, but they are inhibited in their ability to enter the cell cycle, and they are freeze in the G0 phase of the cell cycle. Uh, more or less at the same time, actually this paper was published before, in collaboration with uh, Vito Pistoia and uh, uh, Anna Corcione, we were able to show that MSCs can also inhibit a number of uh, B cell functions in vitro. In this case, you see that uh, B cell proliferation is inhibited significantly by 
in a dose dependent manner by mesenchymas themselves. And this uh, 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 leads to, uh, I apologize because the, 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 the light is so bright that here you don't see uh, basically the column of the graph, but I, I can tell you that there, are, there is a graph and you can even look at the paper, but uh, uh, you can just see the, the, the dots on top. But nevertheless, uh, what uh, is shown here is that, uh, wait a second, maybe I can decrease the brightness. No, actually what happens is that I don't see here anything, but you still see a, a very bright screen there. Uh, nevertheless, uh, MSCs can inhibit also the production of uh, all the different subclasses of immunoglobulins, as well as the differentiation to plasma cells. Uh, in a more recent uh, uh, study, uh, Sabrina Chiesa in the lab decided to address the ability of MSCs to interact with dendritic cells. And uh, these uh, uh, experiments were in part confirmatory as uh, uh, we isolated dendritic cells from uh, the bone marrow of, of bulb sea mice. And, uh, uh, we uh, subjected these, uh, 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 I mean, we subjected the PBMCs, uh, actually, uh, uh, monocytes from the bone marrow of these mice to maturation in, uh, into mature dendritic cells, either in the presence or the absence of mesenchymal stem cells. Or alternatively, we took mature dendritic, dendritic cells and we activated them either in the presence or in the absence of mesenchymal stem cells. The data I will present you have been, uh, 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 that I will show you are exclusively uh, uh, showing the effect of uh, the presence of MSCs when uh, we uh, provide them uh, during uh, activation with LPS, but similar results were obtained when MSCs were uh, added into the culture while we were uh, subjecting monocytes into maturation uh, to mature dendritic cells. So in this study, we confirm what it was already known that mesenchymal stem cells can impair LPS-induced maturation of dendritic cells, as is shown here by a significant decrease of the upregulation of uh, uh, dendritic cell-specific markers, such as the CD11C and CD86, uh, um, um, costimulatory molecules, MHC class one and class two molecules. And interestingly, for what I will tell you later on during the presentation, uh, a significant downregulation of uh, receptors, uh, such as the chemokine receptor CCR7, or uh, uh, integrins that are associated with the ability of uh, cells to get into the lymph nodes, particularly dendritic cells. Uh, in, uh, in this paper that has been uh, uh, just published in the PNS, we were also able to show that uh, LPS activated dendritic cells in the presence of uh, mesenchymal stem cells can uh, produce much less IL-12, TNF, but also IL-10, which is supposed to be an anti-inflammatory cytokine. And this, uh, 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 this uh, uh, inhibition is associated with uh, a, a significant down uh, uh, regulation in the expression of uh, a number of uh, key uh, regulators, such as uh, MAP2 kinase 3 and, FK, uh, and FKB1, which associate with the uh, activation of dendritic cells and the production of cytokines. And uh, this uh, uh, indeed uh, is, uh, uh, as I said, associated with a significant uh, inhibition of uh, the phosphorylation of uh, intracellular kinases involved in uh, cytokine uh, production. Uh, to make sure that uh, indeed uh, this effect was uh, due to the fact that uh, MSCs uh, are able to uh, inhibit the pathway involved with the LPS activation, we first demonstrated, as it was already known, that, uh, uh, that uh, mesenchymal stem cells uh, have uh, 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 expressed all the different toll-like receptors involved in, uh, in uh, uh, the uh, that are important for the uh, signaling through LPS. This was required by one of the reviewers. But uh, more importantly, we were able to demonstrate that uh, this effect does not require cell-to-cell -cell interaction, but uh, is uh, 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 sufficiently mediated by 
supernatants from mesenchymal stem cells, as is demonstrated here, where the inhibition occurs uh, 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 similarly, uh, regardless of the fact that uh, uh, cells are uh, in contact or are just exposed to mesenchymal stem cell supernatant. Another thing that is very important for uh, the uh, dendritic cells ability to uh, perform their uh, functions, of course, is the capability of uh, processing antigens. And uh, with the help of uh, uh, antibodies provided to us by Soldano Ferrone in New York, we uh, uh, evaluated the uh, intracellular expression of uh, uh, some molecules such as MB1 and LM LMP10, which are involved in the immunoproteasome or the proteasome as well inside the cytoplasm of uh, uh, dendritic cells. And as you can see here, the expression of uh, the intracellular expression of uh, LMP10 as well as uh, MB1 is significantly decreased by the exposure of dendritic cells to mesenchymal stem cells uh, in contrast to what you observe in the, uh, control disease or control cells. So overall these results are telling us that uh, MSCs appear to affect the expression, the surface expression of uh, key molecules involved in, uh, 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 in the ability of uh, dendritic cells to present antigens, both, uh, uh, as I said, at the surface level, but also intracellularly, and at the same time also to inhibit a number of cytokines which are uh, very important for instructing the immune uh, response, particularly T cell priming. So what we did next was to address whether these in vitro results result, resulted indeed into in, in, the, uh, in an inhibition of uh, disease to present antigens to CD4 and CD8 T cells. So we utilized transgenic T cells that were uh, 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 specific for uh, an ovalbumin peptide. They were either uh, CD4 uh, uh, T cell, uh, 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 transgenic uh, T cells from the O1110, or uh, uh, transgenic CD8 T cells isolated from OT1 that are all specific for the same peptide over valbumin. These cells were sorted and labeled with CFSE, and therefore were uh, uh, primed with dendritic cells that were activated with uh, ovalbumin and pulse with, uh, uh, that were activated with uh, LPS and pulse with ovalbumin, either alone or in the presence of uh, mesenchymal stem cells. And uh, these are the results. And interestingly, we confirm, as expected, that uh, in the presence of uh, mesenchymal stem cells, dendritic cells uh, uh, pulse with the ovalbumin uh, cannot, compared to uh, uh, the control group, cannot properly induce T cell proliferation, as uh, is shown here by CFSC uh, uh, um, um, labeling uh, at flow cytometry. And this is a, a dose dependent in uh, this T cell priming experiment. Similarly, we were able also to show that uh, also CD8 transgenic T cells isolated from uh, uh, OT1 uh, uh, mice were uh, significantly inhibited in their proliferation when disease were exposed to mesenchymal stem cells in vitro compared to controls. So uh, somehow, a few years ago, uh, we were able to provide uh, a, a, an attempt to, uh, uh, an attemptative uh, uh, cartoon showing how mesenchymal stem cells can uh, affect different immune responses, particularly for what concerns their ability to inhibit the cell, uh, dendritic cells maturation, leading to an accumulation of immature dendritic cells. This will uh, uh, eventually uh, lead to a defective antigen presentation to CD4 and CD8 T cells. But uh, uh, as I showed you before, MSCs do not only have uh, an effect on the acquired immunity through an inhibition of uh, 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 mature dendritic cells and therefore accumulation of telerogenic disease, but also have a, a direct effect through the inhibition of proliferation of CD4 and CD8 T cells, and also an inhibition of proliferation of B cells. 
And we can also, although this is still yet unproven formally, we can uh, uh, predict that uh, uh, the inhibited uh, uh, T cells are likely to be unable to provide help to B cells. And as you know, uh, B cells need T cell help to produce antibodies. So altogether, this is a quite complex interplay in which MSCs act both on the uh, innate side of immunity and on the adaptive side of the immunity. And at the same time, this effect is probably uh, tightly connected. So how can we transfer this uh, uh, relatively large amount of in vitro studies into uh, a clinical translation? Of course, to do that, we first have to uh, uh, you know, uh, challenge it into uh, the proper animal models. And uh, being a, a neuroimmunologist interested in multiple sclerosis, we choose experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, which is a prototypical, although not perfect, model for uh, uh, autoimmunity. And uh, in 2005, we, I'm proud to say we were the first ones to show that uh, when, once again here, you, can, you need to imagine the curves, but uh, uh, when we injected intravenously a disease onset or at the peak of disease, mesenchymal stem cells into animals with EAE, we obtain a significant amelioration. Uh, here we are basically missing there is up here a very a, a lighter gray curve, which is the control that, uh, please believe me, is there. And, uh, and interestingly, this uh, effect was not observed when uh, mesenchymal stem cells were intravenously injected at later phases of disease, suggesting that indeed we need to impact the acute onset of the immune response to be able to obtain a clinical results which were not detected when this was uh, uh, perform when the injections was performed at later phases when uh, uh, most likely an irreversible disability or an irreversible damage of the central nervous system was already uh, occurred. I think that the most exciting part that make us uh, uh, I mean that made this paper the, the most quoted, the most cited in the literature in this field was that uh, for the first time, we were able to show that this effect was at least partially due to the ability of mesenchymal stem cells to induce in vivo tolerance. And how this was demonstrated? Quite easily, isolating T cells from the lymph nodes and the spleen of mice treated with uh, uh, mesenchymal stem cells or controls and uh, rechallenge these cells with myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein, which is the antigen we utilize to induce EAE. And as expected and as, as well known, control mice have a, a high number of uh, precursor cells that are specific for myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein because have been, have been primed following MOG induction. And uh, as expected, these cells proliferate. But those cells isolated from the spleen and lymph nodes of mice that were treated intravenously with the MSCs were not responding anymore, demonstrating that indeed T cells from animals treated with MSCs cannot respond anymore to the immunizing myelin antigen. Later on, we confirmed these results in a different model, which is uh, still an EAE model induced with the PLP in uh, SJL, which is uh, typically a relapsing remitting model of uh, autoimmunity. In this mouse, we were able to confirm that MSCs can uh, colonize to a certain level the spleen and the lymph nodes of uh, the cervical lymph nodes of the mice, and this was confirmed also by histology. But the most uh, interesting part of the immunological side, of the immunological section of that study was that for the first time we were able to show that also the in vivo B cell response was inhibited. In this case, we measure the antibody of all the different subclasses of IgG, specific for PLP in mice uh, uh, treated with mesenchymal stem cells in white and controls in black. And once again, in the animals treated with MSCs, 
we could not observe or we observe a, a lower levels of uh, pathogenic PLP specific uh, um, uh, uh, antibodies. So I think that this data suffices to say, suffice to say that uh, MSCs are a, a potent immunomodulatory uh, uh, treatment for EAE, but uh, a major question at that time still remain unsolved, which is are MSCs uh, capable of, uh, uh, of replace cells and therefore is this uh, therapeutic effect based on cell replacement? Okay, one of the big issues here is uh, are these, uh, I mean, there is a, 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 a constant uh, thought by scientists that MSCs has many other uh, stem cells are immunoprivileged. What is the basis for this uh, uh, thinking? Okay, uh, one of the major uh, reasons to believe that is that when we used human MSCs, as this paper published by uh, Jacques Galipo's uh, group uh, a couple of years ago, or this data uh, produced in our lab, when we use human MSCs, we can still inhibit significantly EAE. Therefore, showing that at least to a certain level, MSCs can work through across MHC constraints because you may expect that uh, injected MSCs are rejected, human uh, MSCs are rejected into mice. Is this the case? Yes, it is the case. In fact, uh, in this paper, again from Jacques Galipo, uh, forget about the details, which is a quite sophisticated study, but what uh, you may just uh, uh, want to take home as a message is that uh, uh, these cells are rejected uh, by uh, MHC class one and class two mismatched recipient mice. And uh, the clinical effects that was observed in this case is rapidly lost uh, over time. So what we observe in EA is that human MSCs appear to work, but on the other side, we have evidence that they seem to be uh, wiped out following injection. Why they are wiped out? For example, because uh, uh, Lorenzo Moretta in, uh, here, in, uh, here, there in Genova, actually the, at the center of uh, biomedical research that uh, Marco nicely uh, uh, quoted, but unfortunately it doesn't exist anymore because of the flooding we had uh, in Genova 10 days ago, and uh, we have over 5 million euros of damage and all the lab is gone. But in that lab at that time, uh, Lorenzo was able to show that MSCs are killed by NK cells, and still in that lab, Federica, in collaboration with uh, uh, with uh, Vito Pistoia was able to show that also gamma delta can lyse uh, mesenchymal stem cells as long as NK and gamma delta are activated. So it seems that on one side we have a clinical effect when human MSCs are injected. On the other side, we have evidence that after a while these cells are killed and are rejected mainly due to the capability of uh, cells of the innate immunity to kill them. Another aspect that stays against the ability of these cells to engraft and uh, replace cells is due to the fact that uh, it is well known since uh, early 2000 that uh, MSCs following intravenous injection are uh, sequestered uh, and entrapped mainly inside the lungs. Uh, this has been addressed by several uh, people in, uh, in different labs, and uh, depending on the uh, results uh, uh, published in the literature, we go from 80% uh, up to 99% of MSCs entrapped in the lungs once they are injected. And this is telling you indirectly something quite important, that it is quite unlikely that cells that stays for more than 90% in the lungs can somehow provide you such a strong effect when eventually they reach the central nervous system, particularly because 
once we work, if we work in a, 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 in a xenogenic or allogenic conditions, they are uh, rejected as you saw in the previous slides. So if we inject it intravenously, most of the cells are in, uh, in, uh, uh, are in, in, uh, entrapped into the lungs. So many people, particularly those interested in the clinical translation of this data, suggested, why don't you inject it intrathecally? So you do what you would do to a, a human, uh, to, a, to an MS patient, why don't you inject it through lumbar puncture inside the, uh, the cerebrospinal fluid in the case of, of uh, humans, and in this case, were injected intrathecally through uh, the uh, injection of a, a catheter into the uh, ventricles of mice. And uh, Sarah in the lab was uh, able to address this question, injecting uh, uh, MSCs either intravenously or intracisternally and compare these effects with uh, uh, mice, uh, control mice injected with PVS intraventricularly, uh, intravenously or intracisternally. And as you can see here, both uh, treatments were effective compared to controls, but uh, we could not observe any evidence of difference in, uh, between the two different routes of administration, suggesting that at least from a clinical point of view, intracisternal and intravenous injections appear to be equally effective. Similarly, we look at histological scores, and uh, also when we look at the myelination, it seemed that uh, both treatments were effective, but uh, did not result in, every, in any significant difference. Of course, uh, we addressed the possibility that uh, there is a, a, a higher engraftment when we injected cells intra, uh, I mean locally, intracisternally, and as expected, after 24 hours, the number of uh, labeled cells into the central nervous system of mice injected intracisternally is uh, certainly higher than, uh, uh, than uh, uh, those uh, uh, injected intraventricular, intravenously. But uh, I apologize, here I don't see that this is after 24 hours and this is after 40 days. But as you can see, after 40 days, the number, the total number of cells, despite being uh, higher in uh, intracisternally injected mice is uh, 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 significantly vanishing, uh, as you can see here, over 150 cells, and here um, a little bit more than 20 cells as an average. And, uh, and, and therefore, this uh, suggested that uh, despite a, a slightly more effective engraftment when cells are injected intra intracisternally, so locally, we really do not achieve any evidence of, clinical, of, of uh, better clinical efficacy or histological scores. And what was interesting to us was uh, the demonstration that uh, even intravenous administration not only is able to modulate immune responses in the periphery, but this was observed also when we isolated T cells from the brain of mice that were either treated intravenously uh, or intracisternally. And uh, look at the number of uh, uh, Tregs as demonstrated here by, uh, by uh, uh, intracellular staining for FOXP3. And uh, in, in this case, we uh, demonstrated that uh, MSC treatment was able to expand the population of Tregs in the brain of mice treated either intra intravenously or intracisternally. And what was particularly interesting was that uh, these cells appear to produce IL-17. And this is in line with a recent paper that was published in Journal of Immunology showing that MSCs appear to be able to uh, induce a, 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 a change of, uh, a functional change of the phenotype of encephalitogenic TH17 cells into regulatory T cells. So, taken together these results, we, at least I hope I, I was able to provide you evidence that MSCs can, uh, on one side, uh, 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 poorly enter the CNS, but are still effective as much as are those that are injected uh, intracisternally. And when we injected intravenously these cells, we could tell that a, a small number was able to, uh, 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 to reach the CNS, but when we uh, attempted to colocalize 
uh, GFP label uh, MSCs with uh, 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 with uh, markers of uh, 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 oligos or astrocytes or neurons, we still could not observe any significant evidence of colocalization, suggesting that at least in our hands, but I have to say that this point uh, in almost everybody else's hands, there is no significant evidence of transdifferentiation. Is this meaning that MSCs do not protect in vivo neurons? No, it's not the case because when we look at the axonal density of mice treated with MSCs or controls, we observe that uh, axons are much more preserved in animals treated with MSCs compared to controls. And when we look at the number of uh, uh, MAP2 positive neurons in the spinal cord of mice treated with MSCs compared to controls, we once again observe much higher number in the treated mice compared to controls. What could be the reason for this uh, protection in vivo? And uh, a couple of years ago, we were able to show that uh, this effect is at least in part, in part due to the ability of MSCs to act on uh, the oxidative stress associated response, as is demonstrated here by the demonstration that uh, the upregulation that we observe in the central nervous system, this is homogenate uh, uh, CNS, of, uh, uh, of uh, um, enzymes associated with the oxidative stress such as CAT, uh, SOD, or uh, glutathione transferase, which is uh, significantly upregulated at disease onset, at the peak of disease, is uh, suddenly reverted by the administration of MSCs. And this occurs for all these enzymes, as, a, as, a, as it is occurring also for metallothionein. Metallothionein are oxidative stress associated uh, uh, um, uh, uh, proteins that are once again associated with uh, uh, stress responses. And uh, these cells, these proteins are upregulated uh, at disease onset, peak of disease, and suddenly reverted by the injection of MSCs. What was particularly interesting to us was that these in vivo studies were confirmed when we utilize neurons and we challenge these neurons uh, with the uh, H2O2 uh, oxide peroxide, uh, that is, of course, an oxidative uh, stimulus. And uh, we observed that the neurons, uh, as expected, upregulate metallothionein. SOD and CAT, and uh, this was uh, significantly and suddenly reverted by the presence of MSCs, suggesting once again that the in vitro, the in vivo uh, effect we observed uh, following uh, injection of uh, intravenous injection of MSCs is due uh, very likely to the ability of these cells to inhibit the upregulation of these uh, molecules in neurons. Then uh, we move to another. Uh, aspect that is uh, very much involved in uh, progression and pathogenesis of multiple sclerosis, which is the uh, gliotic response, uh, which leads to the formation of the glial scar and microglial activation. And uh, Simona in the lab was able to uh, easily show that uh, in mice treated with MSCs, we have uh, a, a, a significant uh, 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 inhibition of uh, 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 GFP positive uh, uh, astrocytes, as well as uh, an inhibition of the uh, uh, IB4 uh, uh, expression on activated microglia. And this uh, uh, indeed uh, suggested us to address the ability of MSCs to interact with microglia, which is uh, a cells at the interface between uh, immunity and, and, and neuroscience due to the ability of these cells to play a major role in the maintenance of the homeostasis within the central nervous system and play a major role as a macrophage-like cells in the brain. In order to address this, we utilize uh, 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 microglial cells, uh, uh, an immortalized line that was uh, uh, triggered with LPS. This line, of course, express uh, TLR4. And uh, we look at the uh, effect of uh, the uh, uh, co-culture with mesenchymal stem cells when 
microglia is activated with LPF. And interestingly, MSCs appear to in significantly inhibit the upregulation of key molecules involved in, uh, uh, in, uh, in inflammation such as INOS, TNF, but at the same time, and we will discuss these results later, appear to enhance the production of IL-1 beta, which is in many cases considered a pro-inflammatory uh, uh, cytokine. At the same time, uh, as expected, uh, uh, stress-associated proteins such as metallothioneins, emoxygenase, or PARP is once again inhibited by the presence of MSCs compared to control. What was interesting that not only MSCs appear to inhibit the secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines or pro-inflammatory molecules, but appear to switch the ability of uh, the uh, microglia to express receptors or molecules which are associated with neuroprotective functions by macroglia. CX3CR1 is the receptor for a chemokine uh, previously known as fractalkine, which has been associated, as we will see later on, with uh, a, a strongly protective effect by microglia. And as you see here, the presence of MSCs appear to enhance the expression of uh, CX, CX3, CR1 on microglia. NAR1 was uh, recently uh, demonstrated in a, a beautiful paper published in Cell to be involved in the ability of microglia cells to protect dopaminergic neurons following uh, different inflammatory insults. And as you can see here, once again, microglia is, uh, uh, have an increased ability to produce NAR1 in the presence of mes mesenchymal stem cells. CD200 receptor, once again, a neuroprotective, a neuroprotective receptor. IGF-1, and this is interesting because IGF-1 is a, is a neurotrophin which has been demonstrated to be uh, uh, produced in microglia following IL-1 beta stimuli. And this, in our opinion, could uh, explain why IL-1 beta in microglia is enhanced, is, uh, uh, is uh, overexpressed. In EP2 is a receptor for prostaglandin 2, which is once again a, an immunomodulatory molecule. So on one side, at least in terms of uh, phenotype and, uh, 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 and uh, uh, mRNA profile, it seems that uh, MSCs are able to switch the phenotype of uh, uh, microglia from uh, a pro-inflammatory one to a, 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 a neuroprotective one. Is this affecting functionally uh, 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 microglia functions, I mean, uh, uh, microglia features? Yes, it, it, it is uh, affecting uh, microglia uh, functions, as is demonstrated by the fact that in the presence of uh, mesenchymal stem cells, microglia uh, uh, activated with LPS enhance its uh, intracellular calcium concentration, enhance phagocytosis, and enhance TREM2 expression. TREM2 expression is a, a, a receptor which is expressed by myeloid cells and which has been associated by Harold Neumann and Marco Colonna as a, a receptor involved in the beneficial phagocytosis of uh, uh, microglia of myelin, myelin debris in the CNS contributing to CNS homeostasis. So based on the results we observed uh, following uh, exposure of uh, microglia cells to, uh, uh, to MSCs, we were triggered by the extreme upregulation of uh, the fractal kind of receptor on uh, uh, the surface and uh, uh, at the mRNA level in microglial cells. Why we were uh, struck by these results? Because uh, uh, Richard Ransoff, a few years ago, published in Nature Neuroscience a very interesting paper showing that uh, CX3CL1, namely fractal kind, expressed by neurons, can modulate the activity of CX3CL1 positive microglia, and this, this, this disruption of this axis is associated with neurotoxicity in mouse with, uh, 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 affected by different uh, uh, mechanisms of neurodegeneration. So 
we were curious to see whether MSCs can produce fractal kind. In a steady state condition, MSCs appear not to produce or produce very little fractal kind. But once we trigger or we expose MSCs to inflammatory condition, which could be the case in, uh, in inflamed CNS, we observe rapidly a significant upregulation both at the mRNA and protein level of uh, fractal kind. So we thought, is this a key molecule involved in the interactions between MSCs and microglia? We decided to silence fractal kind in microglia. And uh, as we hoped, we observed that uh, the effect of observed in the downregulation of TNF is partially reverted, but more importantly, is completely reverted in the case of IL-1 beta, is completely reverted in the case of uh, the uh, fractal kind receptor, NAR1, EP2. So once uh, we utilize in these experiments MSCs silence for the fractal kind, for fractal kind, we could observe that MSCs were not effective anymore in uh, providing a neuroprotective or anti-inflammatory effects on uh, microglial cells. Not only these results were observed uh, at the phenotypical and, uh, and mRNA level, but also functionally, once again, silenced MSCs were not able to enhance the intracellular level of calcium, were uh, unable to enhance phagocytosis or enhance the expression of TREM2. suggesting that indeed MSCs may affect microglia function through the release of fractal kind. And to further pro prove that this was the case, not only we silenced fractal kind, but we tried to recapitulate all those experiments, not using any more MSCs, but adding exogenous fractal kind in uh, uh, microglia experiments, and once again, the addition of uh, fractal kind uh, partially reverted the uh, upregulation of TNF, significantly enhanced the uh, uh, IL-1 beta, enhanced the expression of the receptor for fractal kind, NUR1, EP2, and uh, similar results were observed also when we look at the function, uh, functionality of, uh, uh, of microglia. So, the results of this section of our work is telling us that MSCs uh, uh, in microglia interaction lead to the inhibition of the production of pro-inflammatory molecules and at the same time enhance molecules associated to neuroprotection. Importantly, as it is well known and there are very nice uh, papers and there is a recent uh, 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 there is an, a recent review in nature uh, reviews in immunology on microglia. They, they seem to dissociate two different functions of microglia. On one side, those functions involved with uh, protection from uh, microbes. So those, uh, those uh, functions that seem to be involved in the protection following inflammatory insults that are dampened by the presence of MSCs, but at the same time, they seem to enhance all those functions involved with the homeostasis of CNS, such as phagocytosis, which is involved in the maintenance of a clean and healthy CNS. So we like to, you know, play this little cartoon showing that uh, MSCs can, on one side, inhibit bad microglia and, uh, uh, and foster the appearance of a good microglia. So if we would like to uh, uh, all together uh, 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 attempt to, uh, uh, you know, uh, design a scenario about MSC's function in terms of uh, uh, neuroprotection, we may believe that MSCs can inhibit activation of microglia and potentially induce the generation of uh, 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 microglia with the neuroprotective uh, abilities. They can inhibit the uh, astrocytic proliferation leading to glial scarring. They can potentially 
inhibit uh, 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 the uh, apoptosis of uh, damaged neurons, uh, neurons damaged by macrophage or by immune cells. And, uh, and I didn't address this because we were not uh, directly involved in this, but there are interesting evidence, mainly from uh, uh, Bob Miller, uh, the Cleveland Clinic, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, from uh, Ludwig Eigner in Munich, showing that uh, MSCs can uh, uh, both in vitro and in vivo enhance oligodendrogenesis, and potentially, as I showed you before, uh, in, uh, enhance uh, local neurogenesis. So I hope I was able to show you that MSCs can, on one side, modulate pathogenic immune response. On the other side, protect uh, CNS or neural cells through different uh, uh, mechanisms. But I still challenge you with the idea that we went through a, a significant change or, or switch of the paradigm that uh, started from the idea that MSCs could uh, transdifferentiate and, and uh, uh, repair tissues, then uh, with the idea that MSCs get to the CNS and release factors in a paracrine way that uh, can uh, modulate the immunity inside the CNS and uh, the, uh, uh, and the uh, you know, the, the immune uh, responses leading to uh, damage of the CNS to a, a, a different step, which is a quite provocative, that is suggesting that MSCs do not even need to get into the central nervous system to uh, do their work. Why this uh, occurs? This paper was published in South Stem Cells and is one of the best paper showing that uh, intravenous uh, human MSCs that, as I said, they are rejected uh, after a few days following uh, in, uh, uh, injection, can, intravenous injection, can improve myocardial infarction in mice because these cells that are entrapped in the lungs are activated there to secrete anti-inflammatory proteins such as TSG6. In another paper, published in Nature Medicine, Eva Mazzei was able to show that bone marrow-derived MSCs once again are entrapped in the lungs, and over there they interact with macrophage, which are reprogrammed in a very similar way to what we observe for microglial cells, so, so they are induced to switch from an M1 to an M2 phenotype, and this leads to a complete attenuation of sepsis. So, uh, this year we were able to provide a, a new provocative uh, uh, idea uh, suggesting that MSCs can, in be, can be injected intravenously and once they reach the uh, lungs they are interacting with other cells and it's interesting because I know here there are people very much interested in, uh, in the interactions between uh, immune cells and, uh, and the vagus nerve and we are currently addressing the possibility that vagus is mediating some of the mechanism of, uh, uh, of action of MSCs on immune cells and from this station uh, in part migrate but in a very limited way to target organs such as the CNS or lymph nodes or the myocardium but uh, very much leading to a significant uh, 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 modification of the, uh, of the, um, uh, of the uh, a modification of the environment of the recipient leading to therapeutic uh, uh, results. And how we previous in vitro very novel in our opinion exciting results we obtained in vivo addressing the effect of mesenchymal stem cells on dendritic cells in this case we isolated transgenic T cells from uh, DO11 mice which are specific for the ovalbumin peptide 323 th um, uh, well I can see whatever from an ovalbumin peptide these cells were isolated and labeled with CFSC 
were injected intravenously in, uh, uh, into syngenic Babsi mice. So let's picture this phase of the experiment. Here we have labeled naive T cells, which are specific for ovalbumin. They are injected into a naive Babsi mouse that was never challenged with ovalbumin. 24 hours later, activated dendritic cells pulsed with ovalbumin were injected at this, uh, at this uh, concentration subcutaneously into the foot pad of the mice. Three hours later, mesenchymal stem cells were injected intravenously. So the full picture is T cell specific, transgenic T cell specific for ovalbumin and labeled were injected and are mainly going around this mouse for 24 hours, then they will eventually be primed by dendritic cells that are pulsed with the, the antigen for which these cells are specific. And then three hours later, MSCs enter the scene. And these are the results. What do you expect when uh, a full-blown immune response occurs, for example, when you, you, know, you, you, you are injured in your, in your, uh, uh, in your arm? You will uh, eventually have a lymph node that gets swollen. And this is what occurs because uh, a full-blown immune response occurs because cells start to proliferate because they are activated by cytokines and by dendritic cells, bringing over their uh, 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 antigens that uh, start the immune reaction. And this is the case in, also in this mouse. In the controlled Babsi uh, uh, draining lymph node, we observe a significant swollen, which is due to an increased amount of uh, uh, lymph node cells. But in the MSC-treated uh, draining lymph node, this swollen doesn't occur. The number of uh, uh, lymph node cells is decreased, not, has a, not exclusively as a total cell number, but also for all the different subclasses of uh, immune cells participating into the cytoarchitecture of the lymph node. But what was more interesting was that because we utilized a transgenic T cells that can be identified by flow cytometry isolating T cells from that lymph node, we were able to see the antigen-specific T cells in that lymph node, and we were able to show that while in the control mouse of albumin-specific T cell proliferate, in the MSC-treated mice, these cells proliferate much less. Not only proliferate much less, but also secrete a lower number of cytokines, such as IL-2 and TNF, suggesting for the very first time that MSCs not only inhibit T cell priming in vitro, but more importantly, they can inhibit T cell priming in vivo. Why this may occur? Maybe because dendritic cells that are inhibited, as we observe in vitro, in their ability to upregulate key uh, receptors such as CCR7 and uh, VLA4, which are key cytokines, uh, key receptors involved in, mi in uh, migration into the lymph nodes, are inhibited. That was what we observed in vitro. And when we went to look at uh, CFSC labeled dendritic cells into the lymph nodes of these mice, we observed that uh, both CCR7 positive dendritic cells and uh, uh, VLA4 positive uh, dendritic cells were uh, uh, less uh, uh, numerous or were uh, uh, present at lower numbers in the treated mice compared to controls. So this data somehow suggested that dendritic cells cannot enter the lymph nodes and start T cell priming. And to further confirm this, we uh, started a collaboration with Giammario Sambucetti, which is the, uh, uh, our nuclear medicine uh, colleague in Genova, and we utilized the same uh, uh, protocol, once again, a transgenic DO11 of albumin-specific T cells labeled and injected into syngenic BABC mice. 24 hours later, of albumin-specific LPS-activated dendritic cells were labeled 
but not only were, uh, I mean, not only were uh, pulsed and activated with LPS, but were labeled with Technetium 99, which is able to give us insights about the dynamics of uh, migration of these cells within the first two hours following intravenous injection. So these uh, dendritic cells were either exposed in vitro to mesenchyma stem cells, or we once again utilized dendritic cells that were LPS activated and pulsed with al of albumin, injected, uh, labeled with technetium 99, and injected into the foot pad subcutaneously of these mice. And 15 minutes later, MSCs were injected. So let's see what happens. And uh, in our opinion, this is extremely exciting. These are the results when we look at numbers of dendritic cells entrapped at the level of the, at the site of injection. Let's see what occurs for negative controls. In the negative controls, we mean dendritic cells that were injected into a mouse in which no transgenic T cell receptor uh, of a specific T cells were previously injected. And as you can see here, the kinetic of release from the site of injection of dendritic cells is uh, following a relatively uh, flat curve. Let's see what occurs when positive control cells are uh, I mean in the positive control group. In the positive control group is uh, the group where dendritic cells are injected subcutaneously into a mouse in which transgenic T cells are present. And uh, as you can see here, dendritic cells seems to move toward the lymph node very rapidly suggesting that somehow they can sense T cells that are able to recognize the antigens they are carrying on their back. Let's see what occurs in when MSCs enter the scene. In the in vitro treated dendritic cells, so dendritic cells that were exposed to dendritic to mesenchyma stem cells in vitro, we observe a curve that uh, is pretty much similar to what occurs in the negative controls. I like to call these cells the sloppy dendritic cells because they are kind of, you know, not very, you know, not very fast into, in their ability to move into the lymph node. And uh, as you can see here, this is their slope. What happens when we injected MSN stem cells in vivo? This is uh, really exciting. As expected, in the first 15 minutes, they behave as it, as is the case for the positive control, because in these first 15 minutes, DCs enter a scene where there are just T cells circulating, which are specific for ovalbumin. But after a few minutes, uh, mesenchymal stem cells were intravenously injected. The ability of uh, dendritic cells to be released from the, uh, uh, from the site of injection and moving toward the draining lymph node is completely abrogated. So it seems that within five minutes, MSCs that uh, uh, are uh, injected intravenously, they are entrapped into the lungs, are able to inhibit the ability of disease that are very far away from the lungs, that are entrapped into the subcutaneous tissues of the foot pad, are capable of uh, completely abrogating the ability of this disease to move into the draining lymph node. Let's see the same experiment the other way around. Here we are basically measuring the number of cells that have entered the draining lymph node. Once again, negative control uh, move uh, uh, into the draining lymph node according to a relatively flat curve. Positive control, they get into the lymph node very eagerly, very fast. Sloppy disease, which have been exposed to mesenchymal stem cells in vitro, move into the drain lymph, lymph node in a very slow way, similar to the negative control. M dendritic cells exposed in vivo to mesenchyma stem cells. Once again, first 20, 25 minutes, they behave like the negative control. But 10, 15 minutes later, IV MSCs were injected. They, their ability to enter the lymph node is completely abrogated. So it seems that we are really changing the paradigm of effects of uh, 
amazing canvas themselves, suggesting that MSCs, to be able to change uh, the immune function, do not need to interact directly with MSCs, uh, with the immune cells, but they can significantly impact the behavior of dendritic cells and their ability to prime T cells even at a distance through mechanisms that we are currently attempting to dissect, but that are cer certainly mediated by, not by local cues, but by effects possibly involving uh, molecules such as cytokines or hormones, or uh, vesicles or exosomes, or uh, myrna, but possibly also uh, nerves. So, altogether, we can say that MSCs can uh, inhibit uh, uh, T cell and B cell and macrophage and microglial functions that are involved in the pathogenic uh, uh, immune response leading to uh, CNS damage, but at the same time, they can also provide factors that uh, are uh, 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 involved in neuroprotection, leading to rescue of neurons and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, possibly uh, involved in the promotion of neurogenesis. Uh, Marco uh, or Mauro, uh, it was an hour and a half, uh, hora mezzo, giusto? Quanto? So I have another 15 minutes, or you are dead? One hour. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. All right. So. So are these results showing that MSCs are playing a major role both in vitro and in vivo on immune functions? I, so I say yes. Is there is evidence that neuroprotective effects are good enough to demonstrate a significant therapeutic effect provided by MSCs? We don't know. Let's challenge this, uh, uh, this hypothesis in another, in another model. Here we are talking about uh, ALS, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Uh, in uh, transgenic mouse models, uh, 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 which uh, resemble familiar ALS, and uh, in which there is no inflammatory responses, in these mice, uh, uh, death occurs within 130 125, 140 days since uh, birth, I mean from birth. We attempted to uh, challenge the ability of MSCs to impact neurodegeneration, taking uh, the, the, the most difficult uh, path. We decided to treat mice after disease onset, the few papers that show that uh, some cell treatment could be effective where injecting MSCs, uh, I mean, we're injecting uh, stem cells because uh, this was performed also with neural stem cells well before disease onset. We wanted to challenge this possibility, mimicking a situation that would occur in humans in which you will treat patients after disease onset. So we injected MSCs at day 90, about 30 days after disease onset has occurred. And uh, this is a Kaplan-Meier curve showing that MSCs can uh, significantly increase the survival of uh, these mice by about 20 days, which is a huge increase of the survival uh, uh, curve of these mice. Not only these animals survive better, but they also perform in several motor uh, tests much better than, in the, than the controls. We were able to show that uh, in this animal model, a few cells, but once again, a very few, were able to get into the central nervous system after intravenous injections, both in the spinal cord and in the brain, as you expected, because this, this is a motor neuron disease much, uh, at much higher number in the spinal cord. Nevertheless, once again, after 35 days, there is almost no more cells, suggesting that this effect may not be due to the ability of these cells to engraft and, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, trans-differentiate. 
MSCS could inhibit the uh, ubiquitin accumulation, which is a marker of uh, uh, motor neuron degeneration, as you can see here. They can inhibit astrocytes and microglia proliferation, as we observe in, uh, in, uh, in mice, uh, sorry, in mice with EAE. And, oh my God. Uh, and they can also uh, dis display a, a similar effect we observe in EAE, uh, showing that they can reverse the uh, upregulation of neurodegeneration associated uh, stress, uh, stress associated proteins such as metallothionine. And uh, we were able to show also that uh, MSCs can normalize the release of glutamate, uh, uh, which is, of course, involved in uh, exos exit exitotoxicity, glutamate mediated, in uh, mice with, exo uh, with uh, 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 in transgenic mice with ALS. Uh, demonstrating that indeed MSCs can protect excitotoxicity mediated uh, damage of motor neurons. So let's go to the end. We can say that uh, MSN chemistry cells can be an effective uh, treatment for multiple sclerosis, but also for other neurological diseases. And uh, we are indeed uh, uh, facing a, a, a quite uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, you know, paradox because uh, uh, those cells that somehow attracted the interest of uh, uh, scientists and clinicians for their uh, probable uh, ability to uh, provide therapeutic effect due to their stemness, meaning their ability to uh, repair tissue tra through transdifferentiation, apparently frequent to, uh, re uh, appear to um, repair tissues uh, without much evidence of either engraftment or differentiation. So MSCs are not only a wonderful uh, uh, model for, uh, uh, you know, scientists interested in playing in the lab uh, in vitro and in vivo, but can be already utilized in humans. This is a, a pioneer work by Katerina LeBlanc that was published in Lancet two times uh, 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 and in this study is the results of the effect of the intravenous administration of, of MSCs in uh, acute graft versus host disease, uh, uh, grade four. Grade four is a fatal uh, uh, type of uh, graft versus host disease. And as you can see here, the uh, uh, Kaplan-Meier curve uh, suggests that MSCs can uh, can lead to a, a, a protection from that of about half of the patients for the uh, time of follow-up uh, in this uh, study. MSCs can be isolated from, uh, uh, from uh, 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 patients with multiple sclerosis and appear to have uh, the same phenotype and functional ability from, uh, uh, as those isolated from healthy individuals. MSCs have been already uh, utilized in uh, uh, small pilot studies uh, uh, in, uh, where um, MS uh, patients were treated mainly for, uh, with the aim of uh, uh, demonstrating uh, uh, their safety. And uh, these are studies published by uh, Yamut in, uh, in, uh, in Beirut. And uh, this uh, is a study from uh, Dimitros Karusis and Shimon Slavin uh, from Adassa University in Israel. But uh, despite the fact that small studies have been uh, already published all over the world, uh, we felt like uh, it is necessary for this kind of treatment to uh, convey the efforts of uh, clinicians and scientists interested in demonstrating the efficacy of uh, such a treatment. And uh, uh, with the help of Mark Friedman, we were able to uh, put together all the, or almost all the scientists and clinicians interested in, uh, in this treatment, uh, we uh, established a, an international mesenchymal stem cell transplantation study group that was able to generate a consensus. We were able to obtain the endorsement of uh, important uh, 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 nonprofit association, uh, and, uh, uh, including the Italian MS Society. This uh, group uh, uh, designed a, 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 a clinical trial, which is uh, uh, going to start now. is a phase one, two clinical trial. 
I'm uh, proud to say that somehow uh, I am uh, the coordinator of this international phase two clinical trial, which is going to involve about uh, 160 patients in uh, more than uh, uh, 20 centers from uh, Canada, uh, uh, United States, and mainly Europe, France, uh, UK, uh, Italy, Spain, Sweden, and Denmark. And uh, uh, I am, don't think you are interested in the, uh, the design and the outcomes, but uh, this is a proof of concept study that is uh, mainly interested to demonstrate whether MSCs can uh, provide a, 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 biolog a, a sign of biological activity utilizing uh, magnetic resonance imaging uh, outcomes has uh, evidence of uh, activity. And uh, I just want to thank you and uh, thank all the people that uh, somehow helped me in this and of course uh, all the folks in the lab and, uh, and many other colleagues uh, all over the world that uh, were able to uh, help us in these things. Thank you very much.